Well, it's good to be here again. It's the first time I had the opportunity of teaching, taught on uh, Psalm 23, the Good Shepherd, and then the Amen. last time we talked about the love of God. And this morning I want to teach on unrepentant sin in the life of the believer. Unrepentant sin and its effects in the life of the believer. And by way of introduction, I want to read a little bit out of 2 Samuel chapter number 11. We will focus in Psalm 51. The scripture says, And it came to pass, after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel. And they destroyed the children of Ammon, besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. It came to pass in the eventide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house and from the roof he saw a woman washing herself and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman and one said, Is not this Bathsheba the daughter of Iliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her and, and she came in unto him and he lay with her for she was purified from her uncleanness and she returned unto her house and the woman conceived and sent and told David and said, I am a child. We know how the story goes that David had sent for Uriah to come back from the battle. And Uriah was a man of uh, integrity and he stayed outside of his house. He said, I'm not going to lay with my wife while the men are out fighting. And so David's plot to try to lie and cover up this sin did not work. And he's right. like, well, try it again. I, you know, and tried and tried and he would not go and so he sent him with his own death certificate back to his yeah. commander and said here send him into the hottest part of the battle and when he's surrounded draw back and let him die so it went from we start here it was the time that kings go forth to battle but right. david tarried in jerusalem so we see the first part of this that while david should have been out fighting and should have been leading his men as the lord's king he should have been doing uh, the the office in which he was at, he should have been at battle. He should have been going forth to war. Right. He should have had his mind focused on doing what he was supposed to be doing. It's been said before, and rightly so, that the idle mind is the devil's workshop. Amen. And I believe it was Watson, Thomas Watson, I believe he said that uh, the idle man is like the tennis ball of the devil. Mm -hmm. Then he beats him around, beats him around, until eventually he goes out of play. And so idleness, he was not doing what he was supposed to do and he sinned and he looked out and saw Bathsheba and he laid with her, committed adultery and then he eventually committed murder. Mm -hmm. And he lied about it. And then here we come into Psalm 51. And I want to look very carefully at the effects of sin, unrepentant sin in the life of the believer. And here we have one of the most clear depictions of unrepentant repentant sin in the life of the believer and exactly what the effects were. Uh, today in our society, in our world, we have this overwhelming population of people that teach this antinomian view that right. it really doesn't matter what we do, that God could not love you anymore and he cannot love you any less that he loves you perfectly and so you can live how you please and while yes god loves you how he loves you and you cannot in a sense gain favor by doing good things you are commanded to be holy as he is holy That's right. and you're commanded to live right and so they have this teaching that well god loves us and we can do what we want because god loves us and we have Christian liberty, and they don't understand that Christian liberty is the liberty to follow the law of God. And so right. they teach this idea that you can just do what you want. It doesn't matter. It really just doesn't matter. Just whatever. Just do how you want. Do how you please. And in an effort to magnify the, the grace of God, in an effort to magnify the love of God, they've actually blasphemed God. Mm -hmm. And they've trashed His grace. And they've Amen. trashed His mercy. Mm -hmm. It's the grace of God that forgives us and gives us the grace to serve Him. And so the law that we used to hate, we now love. Mm -hmm. the, the Bible says in Psalm 119 that we delight in the law of God. The, the law that we used to rebel against, we delight in that. So let's look at this. Psalm 51 and verse number 1. Have mercy upon me, O God. 
According to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. It'll be noted that this is when, this is written by David when the Nathan the prophet came unto him after he'd gone into right. Bathsheba. So this is after that had happened. And he says, wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Yeah. In the life of the believer, when you sin, there is this inward look that you just feel nasty. Right. Yeah. Like if you're living in unrepentant sin, you feel unclean. This is not the cry of a man that needs to be saved. This is the cry of a man that is saved and been given a newness of life. David had been given a, a, a new spirit, a, a right heart within himself. He had been regenerated. He'd been saved by the grace of God. And now he had sinned and he feels nasty. Mm -hmm. He feels gross. This was not a man that had lack of uh, bathing materials or, or soap or water right. or a tub or anything like that. He had the best of everything in the kingdom. The best garments, right, right. The best perfumes, the best of everything, and yet he felt dirty. And there's a multitude of things that people go to when they're in unrepentant sin mm -hmm. to try to cover their sin, to make themselves feel better, to yeah. try to hide it from their mind. And David's here just saying, "There's nothing I can do. I, I feel dirty." Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. Amen. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Amen. Number one, the very first thing that's going to happen in a life of a believer that is living in unrepentant and unconfessed sin is you're going to feel nasty. Mm -hmm. You feel disgusting. You feel dirty because you have tasted of the Lord and seen that he's good. That's it. You've been given uh, a new heart, a heart of flesh, and, and, and you're tender to the things of God, and, and you've had that sweet communion and that sweet fellowship with him, and you know of God's law, and you love his law, and now you've done something contrary right. to that new spirit inside of you. Mm -hmm. And you've done something to grieve the Holy Spirit who lives right. in you. And you feel nasty. There, there's nothing nastier than sinning against God that saved Amen. you. Amen. There's nothing more vile than to think that on the cross of Calvary, when Jesus Christ was condemned under the wrath of God on your behalf, that you've now broken his law. That's right. Knowing that Jesus has died for your sin, and here you are in the moment of the the, the of sinning that you would rather do what you want to do and forget what God wants if what I want to do and every time we sin we're saying God I really don't care about what you have to say mm. That's it. Mm. I'm going to do what I want to do I'm the God of my life mm. Mm -hmm. doesn't matter if it's a so called little sin or a so called big sin every time we sin we take God's lordship and say I'm the lord of my life I don't care what you do and as soon as we do it there may be temporary pleasure but immediately we feel nasty right and we know we need to be cleaned yep. we know we need to be cleaned right. mm -hmm. we cannot continue on that way we feel nasty verse number three says for I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me I acknowledge my transgression, my sin is ever before me. What does that mean? Everywhere that David went, there was his sin staring him in the face. Mm -hmm. When he laid on the bed at night and he's ready to go to sleep and he would go to sleep except now it's quiet and the day is gone and he's sitting there in the quiet and he thinks, I killed Uriah mm -hmm. and I committed adultery with his wife. Mm -hmm. I committed adultery on my wife. Right. Every time where he would have a moment, there was sin right in front of him, staring him in the face. You couldn't get away from it. All right. And no doubt that's the same as when we're in sin and when we're in unrepentant sin, where we would go and try to get away from the feeling, our mind would go with us and condemn us. Yeah. Right. There you go. The Lord gave us a conscience. Amen. Mm -hmm. God gave us a conscience that we know right from wrong. Amen. And not only that, when he saves us, he gives us his Holy Spirit. 
Our conscience condemns us and convicts us, and the Holy Spirit convicts us. And David says, "My, I acknowledge my transgression. I know I did it. And everywhere I go, my sin is right before me. It's always before me. There wasn't a place he could go. He could have gone out in the woods away from everybody. There it was. Mm-hmm. He could have been in bed at night alone. There it was. Right. He, he could have been by himself. He could have been with his friends. He could have been doing something that he had enjoyed. And his sin was ever before him. Mm-hmm. Not only does sin make you feel nasty, but you when you're living in unrepentant sin, there it is right in front of your face. When you would get away from it, you cannot. Right. right. It's right there. What a, what a, a, a miserable state to be in. Mm-hmm. That, that I would... I, I would Get away from it, but I can't. And it breaks him down to verse number four. Against thee, thee only have I sinned. Right. And done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Sin brought him down low. Mm -hmm. Had he sinned against Uriah, of course. I mean, he killed the man mm-hmm. and slept with his wife. Of course he'd done wrong against him. Did he, did he violate Bathsheba? Of course he did. Yep. Did he sin against his wife? Of course, and his children, of course. But all those were secondary. Mm-hmm. Who did he really sin against? God. Man. And it broke him down and brought him to a low place mm-hmm. where it wasn't even on his mind what he that he'd sinned against anyone else. He he said, against thee and thee only have I sinned. Sin in the life of the believer brings you low. He says, I've done this evil in thy sight. Thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Listen, behold, I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Mm-hmm. There are those that would try to teach that this just means that he was born in adultery. That's not what he's talking about. Mm-hmm. He wasn't, his parents weren't sinning when he was conceived. What he's saying here is, I was shaken in iniquity and in sin my mother conceived me. He said, the problem with me is me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Listen, the, 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 the external part of his problem was the adultery. Mm-hmm. The external part was the murder. The external was the line, the axe. But the heart of the problem was his heart. Yeah, amen. And and the heart of our problem is our heart. Why do we do what we do? Because it comes from within. Mm -hmm. What did Jesus tell them when they uh, accused him over not eating with washing hands? He said, it's not what goes into the mouth that defiles the man, but what comes out of the man that defiles the man. Because what comes out of the man comes from the heart. And David here says, he, he's not saying that I'm a, a, a circumstance of my situation. I, I'm not a product of my upbringing. It's, he's not throwing off and trying to cast blame. Mm-hmm. He's not saying, well, I wasn't raised right. Well, my mama didn't love me, and so I had to have love from another woman. Oh, my, my daddy didn't love me. No, he's not saying that. He says, my problem is me. I'm the problem. Mm-hmm. I'm the problem. And, and, and at the end of the day, you must realize that you do the things that you do because of you. Mm-hmm. And he got down to the end of it, and he said, I don't have anyone else to blame. I did this. I said, Lord, forgive me. Amen. Lord, right. forgive me. Amen. The externals showed themselves, but what we what we couldn't see, God saw, and that was his heart. Mm-hmm. Amen. And what you do is just an outpouring of what's on the inside. And he had to get to this place of, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. Sin messes with the heart of a man. Sin has tainted the whole being of a person. Behold, thou desirest truth in inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Again, talking about being clean, he says, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. We go back to the leper. 
being out of fellowship. And you'd look in Leviticus, uh, they were out of fellowship and there was uh, cleansing and you had to be purged and cleansed. It's, uh, let's see here, Leviticus 14, 6 and 7, I do believe. And for the living bird, he shall take it and the cedar wood and the scarlet and the hyssop and shall dip them and the living bird in the blood and the bird that was killed over the running water. And he shall sprinkle upon him that is to be cleansed from the leprosy seven times and shall pronounce him clean and shall let the living bird loose into the open field. Amen. David says, I am out of fellowship. I'm dirty. I'm nasty. Again, he's going back and talking about how he needs to be clean. Not only that, it takes us out of fellowship with God. Amen. Now, he can't be lost. You cannot lose salvation. You cannot lose something you did not gain. Amen. And so we're eternally secure in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, but that doesn't mean that we don't that we always have fellowship and communion with him. Right. right. And so as the leper was, he's saying, I'm out of fellowship. Mm -hmm. Things just aren't right right now. So not only does it make you feel nasty, not only does it bring you low, not only does it keep up in your mind all the time and, and haunt your thoughts, it brings you out of fellowship. Amen. It brings you out of fellowship. Listen to this. Make me hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Takes your joy. Mm -hmm. Takes your gladness. If he's saying, make me to hear joy and gladness, then it obviously follows that he was not hearing joy and gladness. Right. If he says, make me hear it, he was not hearing it. Amen. He had no joy. He had no gladness. Listen, the idea that the lost person is the most miserable man on God's green earth is a lie. The most miserable man on the earth is the man that has been born again and saved by the grace of God that is living in sin. Amen. Because he knows to do right and he's been forgiven and he's tasted of the goodness of God and yeah. he sinned against yeah. the very God that saved him. Amen. And he has no joy. Listen, the sinner that's lost and living in sin, he's like a fish in water that doesn't even know he's wet. Mm -hmm. He's just living. Yeah. He's having his little spouts of pleasure, but he has no no idea that he's lost. Right. Oh, but the, the child of God that is living in unrepentant sin and has sinned against God has no joy, has no gladness, mm -hmm. has a coldness, as if it were that God were a million miles away and wouldn't even listen to you. Right. What a feeling. What a, what a feeling that all the joy and all the gladness in your life that you had has been ripped out of you mm -hmm. by yourself. That's it. Your own self, your own, your own rebellious, stupid self did it to you. Mm -hmm. He says, Lord, make me to hear joy and gladness. Make me to hear joy and gladness. Listen, there's a polluting and toxic effect of sin. Mm -hmm. the, the devil would have you to believe that you could have fun sinning and have joy in sin. And I heard uh, Steve Lawson said that joy and sin are mutually exclusive. They do not go together and they cannot go together. Right. And, and this idea that do what makes you happy, just do it. Sin does not make you happy. You're right. Amen. Joy comes from the Lord. You know where joy comes from? Obeying God. Joy comes from the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. The Ten Commandments are not a list of things that we're trying to get lost people to do to um, better themselves. We're not trying to get people that hate the law of God to obey the law of God. Right. No, when God saves a person, He puts new desires in them, and we can love the law of God, and Amen. we can serve the law of God, and we can serve God in that, and we get joy out of obeying God in obedience. And I get such joy out of coming on the Lord's day to Amen. worship Him. You know, people say oftentimes that the law, well, the law of God is just so binding. <laughs> God just won't let me have any fun. Well, which one is binding? Is it murder? You're not having, you're not getting to go out and murder someone. Right. You don't get to go around and lie. <laughs> what was that? So much fun, and now you don't get to do it. 
and you don't get to disobey your parents. I mean, what, which one of God's laws was it that mm -hmm. you're just missing out on? Right. That you can't commit adultery? That you can't serve other gods? I mean, what are we missing out on? We're not being held... What, What's more fun than serving God? Amen. What's more joy in our heart than serving God? And so I submit to you that the most miserable person on this earth is the one that's in unrepentant sin. Listen to it. That the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Amen. That the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Not only does sin affect the, uh, you spiritually, but there's a physical nature to this that you really do experience a, a physical part of, of, of the effect of sin. Uh, Psalm 32, again, a Psalm of David. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. For the day and night, thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer. Selah. There was a physical sickness that David was going through. I don't believe that this is just completely uh, figure of speech. I do believe Amen. that David was sick physically mm -hmm. because he didn't repent and had not confessed to God. And, and, and it'll take your vitality, it'll take your, your, hap your, your happiness, but your, your strength will go from you. Mm -hmm. Hide thy face from my sins. Blot out my iniquities. Again, he says, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. Amen. He's very much acknowledged all the portions of his life that were affected by his own sin. And he says, Lord, renew a right spirit within me. Mm -hmm. You can't serve God right if you're living in sin. Amen. If you're refusing to repent, you're not going to be able to serve him. Cast me not away from thy presence. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Again, he's not saying that he could lose the Holy Spirit of God and be lost eternally. No, he says, give me the power of the Holy Spirit, the grace of God Amen. walking in me. Let me feel the, his sweet presence and communion in my life. Let me feel his and experience, because well, we don't go off films, but let me experience his help. Amen. Let me experience his strength. Let me experience his leading. Let me experience his guidance and his help of, for me. Take not thy Holy Spirit <coughs> from me. Let me be full of his help. Amen. I've quenched him. Let me have his help. I need his help. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation. Uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. There's no joy in salvation if you are in unconfessed sin. That thing that all of a sudden that this just really burned in you, you're like, man, I just got to do it. I got to do it. David looked out and he saw her. He said, I've just got an hammer. Right. And it just seemed so great in the moment. And there it was. And he did it. And, and I'm not going to lie and say there wasn't a moment of pleasure there that he was just like, man, that was great. And then, right. then it hit him. Yep. Man, what have I done? What have I done? Mm. Now, this time, the joy of his salvation was gone. Right. Was it worth it? No. Temporal <coughs> pleasure? There's more permanent and eternal pleasure in the Lord and good pleasure in the Lord. Why would we sacrifice the eternal pleasure and it, it, it lasting joy of God for these little temporary gains? Right. That aren't even gains when you look at the grand scheme of things. There's a little lust, a little pleasure. Right. And it did him no good and it turned his whole family against him. And, and look at the consequences for the rest of his life. Right. Their child died. His son turned against him. His son turned against him. His son was killed. Mm -hmm. His family, the sword never departed out of his family. And look at all that for one little thing. Mm -hmm. He just couldn't help it. Just had to have it. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation. Hold me with thy free spirit. Then he says, then 
Will I teach transgressors thy ways? Yeah. And sinners shall be converted unto thee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. This is in the positive. He's saying, do these things, and I shall sing forth your praise. It, then it means that while he was living in the sense of unconfessed sin, he could not serve right. Right. He could not praise God right. He could not worship right. He was not a witness. Amen. And so not only has he affected his own life, but those around him. Mm -hmm. Sin is never as little as the devil makes it look. Right. right. And it's never as hidden as you think it is. Amen. He, he had convinced himself so much that he had hid this from everybody. And when Nathan came to him, he was angry with the man. Mm -hmm. And Nathan said, you are the man. Amen. It wasn't hidden. Mm -hmm. He said, you've done this secretly, and the things that would happen against him were done in the open. His sin was revealed, and the people knew about it. They couldn't serve. Do you do you want to be a, a witness and a, a, you do you want to be used by God in this community and the community in which He's placed you? Do you, do you want to be a faithful a witness, a faithful uh, Christian in, in this the church here at Dover? Do you, do you want to be used by God? You have. Well, you cannot serve two masters, Amen. and you cannot serve sin. Monday through Saturday and then come into the house of the Lord and say, okay, today I'm going to serve God and everything's going to be fine and no one else knows what I did yesterday. It, it, it was between me and God and nobody else knows. You're not going to come in here and worship God on Sunday when you've been living like hell on Saturday. You got it. When you live like Satan's best friend and then try to come in here and act and put on some show. You have. You, you can trick me. You can trick Brother Lafferty. But you cannot trick God. Amen. Amen. And David could have fooled everybody, but he did not fool God. And, and the fact of sin is that it leaves a lasting mark and there's consequences. And there are people out there that will say, live how you want, there's no consequences. But there was an actual consequence Amen. in everything. Amen. Amen. Yes, God forgave him. Yes, he saved. But he had real lasting consequences that destroyed his life. Amen. Sin is not worth it. Sin is not worth it. Serve God and do it in gladness. Amen. Because it will ruin your life. Everything here that happened to him will happen to any child of God that refuses to repent of their sin. Amen. It is so heartbreaking. It is so heartbreaking to see someone that was serving God and had such a fire for God and, and, and one moment of temptation and instead of obeying God, they fell out. That's it. But... This all sounds dreadful, but there is good news. If you are that one, repent today. Amen. It's not hopeless. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contract heart. O God, thou will not despise. We think over in 1 John, where he says, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. My little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. Mm -hmm. And if any man sin, we have an advocate Amen. with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Amen. If that's you, repent. Mm -hmm. God will forgive you. Mm -hmm. I know we feel so far away from Him in times like this. And I'm wrapping up. I know we're almost 11. We feel so far away. We feel like Adam and Eve that we could hide from God. Mm. And that's the natural response that when we're that down in sin and we've done that wickedly against God that we would say, I'm going to run as far away as I can. Don't run from Him. Go to Him and bow there before Him for forgiveness. Amen. And just like David, He'll, he'll forgive you. He bet. He said he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Though it's not good that you've done it. Stop now and repent. Amen. Stop now and repent. 
Don't let it ruin any more of your life. Don't waste any more of your time. Come to Him now and ask for forgiveness. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank You for this Sunday school time. I pray that You had been exalted and glorified. Pray that You would help us, Lord, if there's any in here in unrepentant sin, that You would convict their hearts yes, and Lord. show them the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross dying for that sin, that they would repent of it and come back in faith and thanksgiving and that they would serve you with gladness. And Lord, if there's any lost, I pray to be pleased to save them for your glory. In Christ's name we pray and amen. Amen. amen.